In this tutorial for the LaCroix Voyager USB 3.0 analyzer, we'll focus on the packet level displays and ways to optimize the view for more efficient debug. Let's start by taking a simple capture of a device enumeration sequence. We'll use a 24 megabyte buffer. Switching to the miscellaneous tab, we're going to disable the automatic filtering of redundant primitives out of the trace so that we can see all the traffic, and we're simply going to trigger on a data packet header. I'll start the analyzer recording and then I'll plug the device side cable directly into the analyzer. This of course starts the enumeration sequence. The trace has triggered. Data is uploading. You'll notice that when you disable the idle and skip filtering, uploading can take noticeably longer. That's because these events still have to be detected and uploaded, so most users will filter these events out unless they're trying to debug a very low level problem. With the trace uploaded, I can now begin to scroll through, and you'll notice a lot of skip traffic and idle symbols. You will see an occasional link command, but there are very few real logical USB packets in this trace, as it appears. Really, there are a lot here. We just need to find a way to hide some of the extraneous traffic. So we give you these buttons, which allow you to control what you see on the display. For example, let's hide the electrical idles. Now I can hide the link commands. Let's hide the isochronous timestamp traffic and skips. How about the other link commands and the idle traffic? Finally, I get to a display where I can see the logical USB data packets. Some simple tips about reading the trace display. The software makes extensive use of color. Color actually trains your eye to recognize events faster than reading the text labels we add. On the left column, you'll notice that we mark packets from the host with an SSTX and packets from the device SRX. Again, these are always from the host perspective, what the host transmits, what the host receives. The software numbers the packets sequentially. You'll see gaps where we've filtered idles or link commands. SS means super speed. We also add a label to the type of packet, TP transaction packet. DP data packet. In the colored boxes, we're going to show the field name. The white box is going to show you the contents of the field. We only display some of the fields by default. By clicking on any of the triangles, you can reveal the rest of the fields within that header. You can also get tips or explanations of what the fields are used for in the protocol. If you decide you'd like to see this field by default, you can always right click and show the packet pending when the data packet is collapsed. I now close the packet and you'll see packets pending is now added and is always displayed by default when the trace opens. You may decide that this field is very important and you want to move it to the left or maybe all the way over so that it's always displayed. Likewise, if you find some fields are not important, you can always right click and choose to hide the direction bit. The link control word can also be opened and displayed in this fashion as can the data payload so you can see the bits that are in the data payload. At the end is the timestamp and the delta time which is the time between the start of this packet and the start of the next. You'll frequently find that if you right click on a field name you'll get options that can be very useful during debug, such as the ability to zero the timestamp at this field. It makes it easier to see time deltas between non-adjacent packets. For example, this data packet is exactly 249 microseconds after the current data packet. Another useful shortcut, say you're interested in doing more thorough debug on this part of the trace, you can click and hold on these triangles and it will open up all of the header fields. Some of the fields will actually scroll off the page. You can use the scroll bar to move over or you can turn on the wrap. That will force a line feed. All the fields will move down so you can see all the packet header fields in a single display. So the software provides several ways you can customize the display to optimize the information you're looking for. There are three alternate displays that you, let you look at this header information. They include the spec view, the details view, and the link tracker. Let's start with the spec view. 
you click the spec view button and a window is displayed that provides a 32-bit table format outlining all the fields within the header and the hex values found within those fields. You can see the fields in binary. That way you don't have to do the hex conversion in your head. You could see exactly which bits are asserted and which are not. Choosing hex gives us a pattern which is very similar to how the spec would show these fields. These arrows allow you to step through multiple header fields to see their values. Alternatively, I can choose update on scroll and then scroll within the trace and you can see the two views are synchronized. I'll close the spec view and we'll open the details view which is this button here. It provides a column formatted table that shows each field and each field contents in hex or in decimal. I like taking the wrap off and then just using the buttons to navigate through each header field. And then the third option is the link tracker which is another supplemental window synchronized to the trace. I like to drag it over and drop it right on top of the details view. I move this over and really what I'm getting now is a bi-directional look at the downstream and upstream traffic moving in both directions. You can see each symbol on a separate row. These buttons allow you to change the format to scrambled, 10-bit codes, running disparity, text gives you a textual description of the field name. This middle button compresses the display to remove the idle so you see more fields that you're interested in. This button actually collapses it further showing you just the first five symbols. Of course you can go all the way out to a full fully zoomed out uncompressed view. You'll see much bigger gaps as you scroll down because again the link commands are removed. So it's much better to use this middle button where you see the whole packet without the gaps or the very compressed view which makes it easier to do packet to packet timing measurements. You simply put the cursor on a row at the beginning of a given packet then you point at the timestamp for the other packet that you're interested in seeing the delta. The software automatically calculates the delta between the start of that packet and the start of this packet. The link tracker is synchronized with the trace display so you can scroll these simultaneously. You can also unsynchronize them. This allows you to leave one view static so then you can easily compare the contents of two fields in two different parts of the trace. The tabbed window design makes it easy to switch between the details view and the link tracker. In fact, I can bring up the spec view, click and drag, hold it over the title bar. Now I have the spec view, the link tracker, the details view, all available on a convenient tab. Please download the next tutorial for more tips and tricks on the Voyager Analyzer.